I'm sure you always hear this from New York City electric unicycle riders that with our pothole ridden street, riding in the city is like going off road. But like going off road is not quite actually going off road. And since the Z10 with its white tire is after all designed for the dirt, it longs for some real action. This week, off road impression of the 9bot Z10. That is, if we can actually find some real trails. And micro impression of the Feiyu WG2X. Worst product name ever, but is it any good? And finally, the return of my beloved IPS i5. There, there, daddy still loves you. As always, if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe and help spread the word. Alright, wanna guess what it is I got in the mail today? So it all started out with a dreaded flat on the IPS i5. Dreaded since um, in order for you to patch the tube, you have to actually open up the case. The problem being that I have ridden it in the rain and the i5 turned out to be not so waterproof. And um, the main bearing around the axle had um, apparently rusted and welded itself to the case which prevented me from actually opening it up. And in me, in me forcing it open, uh, I basically created all kind of problem. I broke the uh, screw, screw attachment uh, on the case. So all of this to tell you the importance of having a good dealer. I was able to send this back to Jason at eWheel who not only uh, fixed the bearing issue on the wheel and he also replaced the actual casing and not only that since the only spare case he had is yellow he actually had this custom painted black to match uh, what I got originally so thanks Jason awesome job now back to the Z10 So last week's video were the two month review of the 9BOT Z10. Um, in it I talked about its speed, maneuverability, as well as what I perceive to be its limitation on its uh, braking performances. And then without any evidence, I declared to be the greatest uh, electric unicycle ever to the annoyances of I'm sure just about everybody. So disclaimer, I may very well have no idea what I'm talking about. And since I only own the IPS i5 and the 9BOT Z10, I'm also probably incredibly biased. Um, however, I do like the Z10, so what can I say? I think it's the greatest scooter ever. Now, admittedly, there was a glaring hole in my review. Actually, more like many, many holes, like this delicious wedge of cheese right here. More specifically, I had not talked about its off-road performances. Since the whole purpose of the giant tubby tire on the Z10 has supposedly been to improve its off-road capability, this was a major miss on my part. Supposedly since A, 9bot had really done zip when it come to marketing of this wheel. I mean, if anything, they seem strangely uninterested in even selling it. And B, I had actually never really ridden it off-road extensively. Partly because, oh, I don't know, maybe being dead center in one of the largest expense of concrete and asphalt in the world, i.e. New York City? So the Z10 does have a few things going for it. Um, it's wide contact patch as well as it's low end and low speed stability coupled with this huge 1800 watt motor which means that you have instant available torque whenever you need it all of these things are super helpful when it comes to off-roading in theory since like a fat suburban Land Rover driver 
I had actually never taken my supposedly off-road vehicle out of the metaphorical parking lot that is New York City. The dirt trail in Central Park had been interesting, but none of the routes were particularly challenging for the Z10. It handled the horse trail easily and was not at all bothered by the small ditches, the occasional lumpy surfaces, and although the bouldering section were fun, there was so little of it that I was left wanting more. Not to mention the fact that the ambiance of roughing it was also somewhat compromised by having a hot dog car a mere 5 yards away. So when someone posted an off-road ride through the cloister up in the Inwood neighborhood nested in the far northern reach of the island of Manhattan, I was both curious and eager to give it a shot. That means an early Saturday subway ride all the way up to 215th Street. And while we wait, let me tell you all about my obsession of the week. After dropping my monster selfie stick um, a few weeks ago, I banged up the Osmo Mobile pretty good, so I figured it's a good time for me to upgrade. And this is what I got. The Feiyu Tech WG2X, a product name so forgettable. What was it that we were talking about again? Since it was designed for a GoPro body mount, it is tiny and splash proof. The X in its NAND denote Wi-Fi which theoretically allow you to connect it to the GoPro and control the camera, however it hasn't really worked since I got it. But that wasn't really the point of this little gimbal anyway. My favorite feature is this and this. Now there's no clever marketing catchphrase for the free spin, but this allowed me to spin the camera freely and position it however I like without having to worry about the camera getting stuck. For that, it gets a pass and we'll see how it holds up. So after an hour long ride train, we arrive at the Inwood station. So years ago, I had a volunteer at uh, the Inwood Park and I always distinctly remember how differently this area felt from as compared to the rest of Manhattan. So the whole area is, consists of several really steep hills. As a matter of fact, in certain sections, there are actually really long staircase that connects one street to another. I mean, this is technically part of 215th Street. We met at the Starbucks on Broadway. The one-wheel group didn't show, but the organizer was happy to show me the trail which was consisted mostly of broken asphalt covered with a thick layer of autumn leaves still wet from the rain the night before. So no dirt trails here, but the wet leaves does present a shifting surface that adds to the difficulties. The Z10 easily powered up the steep grade that brought us up to a bluff overlooking the Hudson and the Palisade across the river. Now this didn't come as a surprise since I had never encountered any difficulties with the bridges here in New York City. Despite the steep incline, the climb and even the acceleration fell unaffected by the grade. The one wheel with its crazy white tire does have an advantage on grip and stability, but the Z10 wins when it comes to torque and speed. Plus not having to worry about nosedive and range are huge pluses. I in, however, continue to be fascinated by the one wheel. I will have to try it sometime. Now, there were several spots where the broken asphalt gave way to soft mud and dirt, and whenever there is a sudden change of surfaces and where grip disappear all of a sudden, the Z10 were often caught by surprise and unable to maintain balance. Now, admittedly, this likely also have to do with rider experiences. I do feel that with more practice, I would be able to better read the terrain and surface condition and know what the Z10 can handle, at what speed, and what is the appropriate maneuver in different circumstances. I do have to say that riding glades while snowboarding, that is, through the tree rather than staying on trail, is one of my favorite things to do. The technical precision required to chart a winding path through the especially dense forested section 
combined with a sense of isolation and quietness amongst the tree is always intoxicating. And speaking of snow, so for whatever reason, there had been an influx of Russian on the New York City E unicycle board, and uh, they certainly all ride in snow and on icy condition without any issues. So it is definitely practically possible. However, um, you might have to be a Russian to do it. Overall, I would say that the Z10 performed well given the circumstances. Now, if you are looking for downhill mountain bike-like performances, this isn't it for the simple fact that your legs just can't compete with a pair of stainless steel fork and an air shock. As a matter of fact, downhill on the Z10 felt somewhat sketchy since I just can't bring myself into trusting its brake completely. I have heard that the production Z10 were tuned for higher torque to improve hill climb at the expense of brake capacity. Now I don't know if this is true, however I have had the experience of strange braking behaviors on several occasions, either from a cold start or during steep descent. The bottom line is that brake is one of those things where 99.9% .9 reliability is just not good enough. You need it to work 100% of the time and you need it to work well. So conclusion, I think as a platform the Z10 is sufficiently robust where the limitation I had encountered on the trail is more often my skill rather than sound issues with the wheel itself. In most instances I am confident that with more experience and practice I would have gotten through whatever terrain challenges I had encountered. And most importantly, it scored well in the one metric that really mattered. That I love every single minute of off-roading with the Z10. I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I love making it. As always, please like and subscribe and I can really use your help with spreading the word. And also, I would love to hear from you as well. Anyhow, until the next video, thank you.